The DNA analysis gives us a lot more information. Here is the salivary microbiome which was produced by the Max Planck uh, Institute as part of the Human Microbiome uh, Project and the size of the text is roughly proportional to the percentage of that particular species of phyla uh, that they found. This is very small but on the other hand it's Yersinia. Yersinia, which uh, is Yersinia pestis, uh, one of the subspecies, was responsible for the Black Death. Yersinia was found in the saliva of healthy human beings from 12 different places on the, pa uh, on the planet, along with Neisseria, Strep, uh, and a number of other um, Enterobacter, a number of other uh, organisms that we would regard as being pathogenic. And yet very few of these could actually be cultured. Some were cultured, very few could actually be cultured. Because when the, micro when the microbes move into the microbiome, there is a lot of sharing uh, of genome. Actually genes, uh, and especially plasmids, disappear. Uh, and, and you're dealing with a community of microbes rather than individual infestations of microbes. And this community builds up gradually during life. So where do the microbes come from? Everywhere. Here is the um, cigarette microbiome, which was published last year, I think, yes, 2010. And it shows that uh, when somebody smokes a cigarette, they take in a, a very large load of Pseudomonas, Acinobacter, Klebsiella, Clostridium, Bacillus, Proteus, and Staphs down here at the bottom at about the 5% uh, level. And there are other species, of course, as well that couldn't be identified or that are smaller than the 5% level. Think about it. Uh, the other thing that's very interesting is that the initial data from the COPD lung found that uh, Pseudomonas is uh, very strong in the, in the COPD lung. The microbiome work is opening an entire new uh, insight into how the human body functions and in particular how it dysfunctions.